We're here with Jalon White Newsom. She is a new AGU board member and the CEO and founder of a green environment and economy. Jalon, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate the opportunity. Now, you've done a lot of work in environmental justice. What got you into that field? From the start in elementary school, I loved science. My first science project was actually taking water samples out of the Rouge River in Detroit. And from that point on, it was the physical environment, but also the fact that our physical environment could cause harm to people. And I soon learned in high school at an internship at Dow Chemical that, you know, what we do to our environment, what we produce, how we manufacture, you know, if we don't do that responsibly, it impacts our air, it impacts our water, and most importantly, it impacts the health of people. So my passion for science, coupled with my passion to protect people, has been like this constant thread throughout my career. We talk about a lot of times, yes, there is the general threat to everyone when we talk about pollution, when we talk about uh, environmental uh, problems as well as in climate change, but minority populations are sometimes at a greater disadvantage. Definitely, and, and I think, you know, what I tell everybody, particularly as we talk about climate change, everybody has an opportunity to feel rain, to feel heat, but how you feel that rain, how you feel that heat, if you have systems and infrastructure for protection, that is where the difference comes. So oftentimes, low-income communities, communities of color, are not only dealing with the threats of climate change, but other stressors in their environment. Unfortunately, and their multiple data and research shows that low-income communities and communities of color continue to be hit the hardest by pollution. And with my public health background, knowing that when you're exposed to these environmental stressors, it makes you more vulnerable to other threats. And so that's why when we talk about science and solutions, we have to make sure that we're focusing these things on, again, these communities that have been overly impacted, cumulatively burdened by the physical environment as well as society. So how might members you know, go about trying to get involved in some of this advocacy? Sure, I think one of the greatest opportunities for AGU members is to look in their own community, figure out what's going on, what's happening, and really reach out to community-based organizations that are engaged in something that you're passionate about. When I think about scientists and um, what we can offer, it's also important to understand what communities can offer, what communities can teach you, what wisdom that they can share. What are some policies that we may want to look into? I think what's important is the way that policy is developed. And oftentimes we, in being a formal federal policy director, we write really cool policy and we have great words, but we don't think about how that policy is actually going to be operationalized and what are the <laughs> potential unintentional negative consequences that can come from that policy. So there's many policies out there, but I think the process by which we create that policy is most important. We have to make sure that the folks that that policy is intended to serve are at the table, are in the room, have the same power when it comes to really saying, shaping it, but also how it's implemented. Well, Jalan, thank you so much for <laughs> your time today. Thank you.